Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're gonna to go over the basics of gas mask filters, which ones you should use and when. Let's get to it. This year we've been exposed to several scenarios where you might need a gas mask. We've had pandemic, of course, we've seen wildfires, and we've also seen riots where riot control agents have been used. Fortunately, we haven't seen any global conflict or nuclear scenarios yet, but that would be another instance where, of course, you would need a gas mask to protect yourself against nuclear fallout. So as you can see, I have three different gas mask filters here, and they all offer a different level of protection, ranging from bare bones protection to ultimate protection. Now, all of these filters have standard NATO 40 millimeter threading, meaning that they will fit any gas mask which has 40 millimeter threading. This is a standard for NATO gas masks to ensure that if one country has an excess supply of gas mask filters, then they'll be compatible with another country's. So it's just a universal standard. So I strongly encourage you, if you are going to get a gas mask, make sure you get one that receives 40 millimeter NATO filters. Now, if you are thinking about getting a gas mask, Two great options are the Mira Safety CM6M and the Mestel Safety SGE BB400-3. Now, both of these offer great protection. I've done reviews on both, but both will receive NATO 40 millimeter filters. And as you can see, there are multiple ports on both of the masks. That means you can use up to two or three filters simultaneously, but that might lead to a bit of neck strain. Using multiple filters on a gas mask like this is gonna make it easier to breathe. Now, if I just had one on here, I would cap the other side with the cap that comes with it, and airflow is gonna be more restricted because I only have one filter working. Now, somebody might be asking, can you combine filters? Uh, you can but the filtration is only gonna be as good then as the lowest level of filter that you have on there because obviously air is gonna be coming through the weaker side as well. So let's talk about these different types of filters, shall we? So I have three filters here which all offer different levels of protection. Level one is your P3 HEPA filter. Level two is your P3 HEPA filter plus activated carbon. And level three is your P3 HEPA filter plus activated carbon plus an agent which is going to help you neutralize carbon monoxide. So let's get to know these filters and understand exactly what their capabilities and limitations are. So let's first start out with the most bare bones of filter. This is a P3 particulate filter. This is a HEPA filter system. And this is a filter which is gonna filter out particles down to 0.01 microns. This will easily filter out particles and droplets which are going to carry viruses. Remember, viruses, even though they are actually 0.001 microns in size, if we're talking about the coronavirus, they don't just fly around like they have wings. They can't exist outside of a host for long, and they certainly can't exist outside of a host unless they're hitchhiking on a dust particle or a water droplet or something to that effect. So. This will easily filter out the particles that those viruses are gonna be hitchhiking on. You're gonna get much greater protection from a P3 filter than you will with an N95 mask or a surgical mask, which are only designed to minimize the expulsion and intake of particles. So if I was to put on this surgical mask right here, as you can see, obviously air can easily flow around and into and out of uh, that bypasses the actual filtration system. So if you're in a room then with an airborne virus, this is not going to necessarily protect you because there's places where the virus can still get in and these aren't necessarily uh, strong enough, tight enough filter that it's going to protect those particles even if they're high check, hitchhiking on other particles to get through. What it's gonna do though is limit the amount of viral load that you're going to potentially intake, which is gonna minimize the risk of you getting infected in the first place. And if you do get infected, it may not be as bad if we're talking about the virus, right? The virus that everybody's familiar with this year. Whereas something like this that offers a tight face seal, you're gonna be exposed to very little, if any, you shouldn't be exposed to any virus particles. So that's the difference. So the second filter that you see here 
it has the P3 filtration built into it. But in addition to that, it also has activated carbon. How activated carbon works is that it adsorbs, not absorb, but it adsorbs and it acts like a magnet. That's what the term adsorb means as opposed to absorption, which is being filled up with something. Adsorption is things adhering to that thing or things sticking to something. The easiest way to understand it is that the activated carbon granules in here act as a magnet for chemicals that come in the form of gases. So eventually, this is going to expire. It has a finite lifespan because it can only adsorb so much without eventually no air being able to pass through. So you're going to know when your filter is expired when your breathing becomes very laborious because it's harder and harder to get oxygen through because the filter has become clogged. Now, depending on the environment that you're in, you could use a filter up in 12 hours or 72 hours, or you know, if you're in a low contamination environment, it could be a couple weeks. But the problem with activated carbon is that once you crack this seal, and once you find yourself in an environment where you're using it, it's not only gonna pick up uh, bad chemicals necessarily or harmful chemicals, it's gonna be attracting all kinds of uh, chemical gases and stuff like that. So even if I was to leave this out on the table here in the garage where there's probably a lot of different chemical agents emanating, if I was to leave this in the garage for a year or so, chances are it would adsorb a lot of that stuff and it would be effectively useless. So that's our second layer of protection. So our third layer of protection is a carbon monoxide filter. So this not only provides us protection against biological contaminants, it provides us protection against gases. And I forgot to add that these will also provide protection against alpha and beta nuclear particles, uh, particles which carry radiation that you don't want to breathe into your lungs. So all of these will offer various levels of CBRN protection. This will offer the most, including carbon monoxide. So this has a chemical in it called hopcolite. Now what hopcolite does, and I should say it's a very finite amount of hopcolite, so this is not going to last that long if you find yourself in a carbon monoxide dense environment. This is for escape and evasion purposes only. This hopcolite will add an atom to the carbon monoxide turning it into carbon dioxide, which is going to be less toxic than the carbon monoxide. So the idea is that, you know, yeah, carbon dioxide is not good for you, but carbon monoxide is gonna kill you a lot faster. So this should get you through about 15 minutes of carbon monoxide exposure. The company uh, that tested these, Mira Safety, found that it, in their test that it was effective out to 20 minutes, but to err on the side of caution, uh, they advise no more than 15 minutes with something like this. So what type of scenario might you find yourself exposed to carbon monoxide? Well, if you were in the thick of a bushfire, and I'm talking like in the thick of a bushfire where there was no escape, and you know maybe you were trapped in a room somewhere or something like that, then this could potentially come in handy in that instance. However, it only is gonna last 15 minutes. So this is not for sitting around waiting to ride something out. This is for getting your ass out of Dodge. All of these will protect against smoke. Smoke is a particulate, so the P3 filter, the activated carbon filter will also protect against the dangerous gases, which might be emitted by the smoke. And this will also prevent against the smoke and of course the carbon monoxide. So imagine there's a nuclear attack on the city that you live in and you find yourself just on the periphery of the uh, thermal part of the blast zone. So the building is on fire, but there's also going to be nuclear fallout, which is gonna be coming down within the next hour or so. So this device here will allow you to escape the building and evade the carbon monoxide or convert that carbon monoxide into the more breathable carbon dioxide. And then once you got to ground zero, the other aspects of the filter will still work. So just because you've exhausted the hopcolite, the HEPA filtration and the activated carbon will still function in the exact same way and for the exact same amount of time as one of these filters would. Now, some people have the question of, what do you need to protect yourself from tear gas? Now, in most cases, tear gas, contrary to the term, is not actually a gas. 
it's a particle, it's a smoke. So the P3 HEPA filter is going to protect you against that. However, there is a process called sublimation where under certain conditions, tear gas can actually become a gas. And those situations are one in which there's high humidity and a higher temperature. So if you find yourself in the midst of a riot, or it's hotter out and it's more humid, then the effectiveness of this is going to be limited in protecting against those types of gases. These multi-purpose filters are great for everyday use. If you're doing some kind of chemical spraying or if you're using some kind of uh, toxic cleaning agents or you're spraying insecticide or pesticide or whatever the case might be, this is a great thing just to have not only for emergency situations, but just for everyday use around the house. Now the HEPA filter, you don't have to worry about adsorption. You just have to worry about it getting dirty. Now I should also say that the CDC has now said that you can reuse these types of filters if you decontaminate the exterior. But bear in mind that there could still be live virus within the thing itself. Now you could use ultraviolet light to try to penetrate in there to kill it. But what I would advise is typically these things are sold in six packs anyways. So if you were using them interchangeably and you were going into a red zone, uh, what I would do is after I had used it for a day or I got my day's use out of it, I would decontaminate the exterior. I would put it aside and let it decontaminate for a couple weeks before I went to use it again. Just make sure it's not gonna be exposed to any crazy temperature extremes. You're not leaving it in direct sunlight, even though yes, that will kill uh, viruses if there's ultraviolet light on it, but you also don't wanna degrade the HEPA filtration system. You don't want it to get too dry because then that HEPA filter will become brittle. Now, a lot of people wanna know about shelf life. While the shelf life of a HEPA filter is basically as long as uh, the paper becomes brittle. I think these are probably around between five to 10 years, possibly longer than that. But I'm guessing that if you store this in a vacuum sealed bag, which it comes in, uh, it's gonna last a long time. Just like food, what's gonna cause this to expire faster is going to be wild temperature extremes and exposure to moisture and oxygen. So if you can keep this in an oxygen-free, moisture-free environment in a cold, dry place where the temperature is constant, it's gonna last a long time. Same thing with these filters here. The activated carbon is not going to expire. What it might do, however, is that if there is oxygen getting into this, unless it's a 100% perfect seal, then it's going to be intaking some of that background uh, chemicals and gases which could eventually cause the filter to uh, expire. But I think that would probably take a long time, especially if you, if you had the factory caps on it, and especially if on top of that you vacuum seal it. These are rated for five years, but as I've been told, there's potentially a bit of planned obsolescence with that as well, so just consider that. Uh, but they also do that for legal purposes and just to err on the side of caution. I understand why manufacturers do that. But again, you know, they might last a lot longer than they purport. So these are about five years. I believe these ones are seven to 10 years. And these over here, this is a 20 year filter from Mira Safety. And these are a lot more expensive. They're about twice the price as these. They do the exact same thing as this. It's a multi-purpose filter. But it has a proprietary blend of agents in there which is going to allow for a greater shelf life and it's a unique vacuum sealing process which also vacuum seals the internal uh, components of the filter itself. So it's not just vacuum sealing oxygen out of the outside, but it's also vacuum sealing the inside. And if you see me do a video on this in the past, I've opened it up and you can hear that suction pop. it's sealed that tight when uh, you break one of these apart. Now, these also ship in vacuum sealed Mylar bags, which is awesome. Uh, that means that, you know, they're gonna last a long time. And I stand corrected on these. This has an expiration date of 2034. So I think this is probably the ultimate filter because not only does it filter out everything, but you're getting 14 years of life out of it 
and it's made of metal. Now this is a hard enough plastic that you're never gonna break this in the field, I don't think, but there is that possibility if you're in colder temperatures and the plastic gets brittle, but this thing made of metal, it's a bit heavier, so you know, you're probably not gonna be using two of these on your face, you could. That's something to consider is that when you're wearing a gas mask, everything is going to be a lot harder. You know, I would say that your cardiovascular capability is going to be diminished by like 75%. And the problem is, is that usually when you're using one, you're gonna be in a very high stress situation already. So that's why it's good to, you know, bust out your gas mask, maybe buy a filter just for the purpose of training yourself to use it. I've done a, vi a video on running with a gas mask and I tried to run with a gas mask and it is not easy to say the least. And especially if you're gonna be wearing a hazmat suit on top of that, where you're gonna be sweating buckets, then that's something else to consider as well. Anyways, I hope you guys got something useful out of this video. I hope you have a better understanding of what you can use these various filters for. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And myself and hopefully Roman from Mirror Safety will pop in and answer some of those questions that you might have. Once again, you can get these all at canadianpreparedness.com. I would strongly recommend one of these for the long haul, especially if you live in a forest fire prone region or if you live in a city where, you know, as a part of your escape and evasion kit from a, a building, if you work in a high rise, you know, having one of these is definitely a good thing to pair with your gas mask. Uh, you can just use one of these or one of these to prevent the smoke inhalation, but this will ensure carbon monoxide protection. I should also add that you can get something called smoke hoods, which basically do this same thing, but they typically don't do this and they, well, yeah, they don't do either of these things, okay? Or they do, but to a limited extent and they're disposable and they're one-time use only. So if you already own a gas mask, then it's a no-brainer to pick up a couple of these. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com. Your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER. All one word in all caps.